Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. This is the fifth lesson in the first chapter on the muscular and skeletal system, antagonistic muscle action. As always, we'll be focusing only on the learning objectives found in the official Cambridge textbook and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. If you haven't already done so, take a look at my previous lesson on muscles, as many of the terms covered will be relevant for this lesson. Our three learning objectives today are to understand that muscles work in pairs to create movement, identify the action of an agonist and an antagonist, and to explain how muscles work using isotonic and isometric contractions. Throughout the video I'll also be providing you with practical examples so that you'll have a bank to call upon come exam time. Since muscles can only pull on bones, they can only create movement in one direction. The bicep is only able to pull on the forearm so it can bend but not straighten the arm at the elbow. Therefore muscles come in pairs so that movement in two directions is possible. For example, when the hamstrings contract, they pull on the bones in the lower leg, producing flexion at the knee. The quadriceps are required to create the opposite movement, extension, which enables the runner to straighten their leg before the next heel strike. When muscles work in pairs, it's known as an antagonistic muscle action. As one muscle contracts, the other relaxes to enable movement. Imagine, if both muscles contracted at the same time and with equal force, there would be no movement at all. Each muscle in a pair is named depending on its role at any given moment. The agonist or prime mover is the muscle that contracts to create movement. This is the one doing the work. Meanwhile, the antagonist relaxes so that its length can increase and movement can occur at the joint. The agonist and the antagonist combined are known as an antagonistic pair. Antagonistic pairs sit back to back or opposite one another. So we're looking at the biceps and triceps, hamstrings and quadriceps, hip flexors and gluteals, etc. Here are some examples to demonstrate antagonistic muscle action in a practical context. During the upward phase of a bicep curl, the bicep contracts and shortens, creating flexion at the elbow joint. The bicep has therefore adopted the role of the agonist. The tricep, meanwhile, is the antagonist, as it needs to relax to allow movement to occur. When kicking a football, the quadriceps contract to extend the knee, while the hamstrings relax and lengthen. Finally, during a long jump takeoff, the gastrocnemius contracts and the tibialis anterior on the front of the lower leg relaxes. Plantar flexion or the pointing downwards of the toes is the outcome. We've flown through the first two learning objectives and now only need to explain how muscles work using isotonic and isometric contractions. The key thing to note here is that muscles don't always get shorter as they contract and there are two main types of contraction that you need to know, isometric and isotonic. When a muscle contracts isometrically, it produces force but stays the same length. We're therefore looking at examples from sport that involve little or no movement, including an Olympic lift where an isometric contraction in the deltoids helps the athlete hold the bar above their head. Other examples include scrummaging between two equally matched packs in rugby, where there is limited movement in either direction. Conversely, isotonic contractions involve a change in length as force is produced. There are two types of isotonic contraction, concentric and eccentric. A concentric contraction is where a muscle shortens while it contracts, such as the triceps which pull on the forearm and extend the elbow when shooting in basketball. An eccentric contraction, on the other hand, is where a muscle lengthens while it contracts. During the downward phase of a squat, the quadriceps lengthen, slowly lowering the body towards the floor. Now we have just covered everything you need to know on topic 1.5, but here's a quick task so that you can practice applying what you've learned. For this one, you need to be able to state the agonist and antagonist and the types of contraction these muscles are undergoing when the leg bends at the knee joint. Pause the video now if you like to fill in the blanks. The hamstrings are the agonist muscles and are undergoing a concentric contraction. This of course means that the muscles are getting shorter as they contract, pulling on the lower leg and creating flexion at the knee. Meanwhile, the quadriceps are the antagonist muscles and are undergoing an eccentric contraction. This means that they lengthen, allowing the movement to occur. Now I know that we've covered a lot here, but stick with it and remember that repetition is the key. The more times you revisit this information, the more you'll store in your long-term memory for exam day. Now during this lesson, I referred to plenty of the key terms covered in my previous Previous videos. If you struggle with naming the bones or the movement types, go and take a look at the other lessons in the chapter by clicking on the banner. As always, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.